Well, welcome back to the Verity View Pod and Austin FC Podcast brought to you by KVU, the ABC in Austin, Texas. I'm Paul Livingood, Senior Digital Sports Producer. And joining me this week, we have Brittany Flowers and Jake Garcia. And we'll be later joined by Austin FC forward Kakuta Mane. How are you guys doing? Pretty good, Paul. Thanks. Fantastic. <laughs> Had a, had, a, had a five day vacation and I am ready to roll. What'd you do? I went back to California to watch my sister get her master's degree. And uh, so, yeah, the Go Garcia sis. Congratulations. The, the nice. Garcia siblings, and there are three of us, uh, now have a combined four degrees. And my younger brother accounts for none of them. Uh, I thought you would be the one that. <laughs> I thought it would be you for some reason. I, I work for a TV station. Of course, I have at least one. Do you have two? I do have two. Yeah, I got my master's. Man. Woo! Dang, Jake. Okay. Yeah, I have one. My, that's, my, that's, why, uh, that's why you're the... Uh, you're the captain. We're breaking it out. We're breaking it out already. <laughs> that's why he's I got the my wow. captain's band this week. I would call that a dollar store captain's band, but I don't even like, it's not even that good. You wouldn't, that's just, I feel like you need to get a C on there. You need to do more arts and crafts, my friend. Yeah, you're right. better. I do need to get a C on there, but I'll tell you this, it costs a whole lot more than a dollar because this is a, it's a running sleeve where it's so like you can put your iPhone in there when you run. Um, it costs, I think like 20 bucks from an expo. Oh, we have another. I'm giving you a yellow card for, for uh mm, captain's man okay all right we're gonna have over under how many yellow cards before this pot is over i'm gonna set i'm gonna set it at four and a half i mean if you want to eject me that's fine but you'll be without your fearless captain <laughs> speaking of let's talk about the game speaking of, let's talk about the game oh my goodness so austin fc lost 2-0 to la galaxy uh last weekend um, the first goal came via a um, a ball played over to Sebastian Legette, as I've been told is how to pronounce his name. Um, on the play, uh, Hector Jimenez went down um, and he got injured and sprained his MCL. And we'll talk about that a little later. And then the, uh, the second half, the man that we all talked about um, going into the match, Chicharito, he... Um, found a way to find the back of the net. He leads the league with seven goals so far this season. Um, so just hop into the analysis from both my colleagues, Brittany and Jake. Brittany, what, what did you think from watching the, the match? It's weird because if you just look at like the stats, our possession was great. We had shots on goal, but if you watch the game, it was rough. And look, I'm an extremely positive person. I think that this maybe was our worst game yet. That being said, when you play poorly, that's when your weaknesses are revealed and then you get to learn from that. I thought there were uh, a few positives that came out. Obviously, Brad Stuver is an absolute hero. Uh, incredible yeah. save on that PK. Uh, we also got to see a lot of new faces and and you see how they played with the team. Um, obviously, Alex Ring being out, other people had to sort of step up and and step into that role. But I think we really we really felt his absence for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. I, it, it just for a while it seemed like you know they were kind of in it, and then that first goal happened. Um, and then I mean, you're never out of a one a one zero game in soccer, obviously. Um, but they just couldn't fit it. Like one of the things that Josh Wolf talked about um, in, the, in both press conferences on uh, after the game and on Tuesday um, was that they didn't, they weren't finishing in the final third. Um, and so they, they just weren't finding those opportunities in the final third. And it showed. And then once uh, Chicharito got his second goal in the, uh, I think it was like the 70th minute or 80th minute, um, that was kind of the, the, the theoretical dagger um because they just they weren't finding enough uh, enough chances to get a goal uh, let alone two i think if um this game had been simply a matter of the galaxy 
having Chicharito and Austin FC not having Chicharito, that would have been, uh, you know, a framework for the game that a lot of people could live with. But it really wasn't that. Like the only thing Austin FC won in that game was the possession battle and everything else. Uh, they looked pretty overmatched. Um, I think I think they won the possession battle like 54 to 46, but they were outshot uh, in terms of shots on goal, four to two. Um, they look flat too. And, and that's not me just saying that. That's Josh Wolf saying that. Um, and when you have... You know, you've built your entire offense around two things, possessing the ball and, and finishing and creating scoring chances. And you only have one of those things um, yeah, like you run into some problems. And I think the fact that they weren't getting chances, they weren't being creative in, in the last uh, third of the field, that can be attributed to them just not flying around like we've been accustomed to watching them so far this season. Um, and so you wonder, is it the, the road trip taking its toll? Are the injuries piling up and, and the depth not um, being able to shoulder as much of the workload? I don't know what the answer is, but uh, I do know that you still got three games left on this road trip. None of them are against cakewalk teams. Um, so they'll need to find out uh, what those answers are pretty quickly. Yeah, coming up, uh, the, the, obviously the next game is uh, Nashville SC, but then you have the monster blowing through the MLS right now in Seattle, um, and then a team that they've already lost to going back to uh, Kansas City to play them once again before they uh, play their first home match. So uh, I wanted to circle back to the first goal and the injury that happened uh, while it was going on. Hector Jimenez, at the time, they didn't uh, release what – his injury was he needed to be carted off um, and substituted. He looked like he was in so much pain. Yeah, it, it did not look didn't look good. It was one of those when you watch sports, it's like you know, an avid sports fan, you can kind of tell you're like, ooh, that might that might not be good. Um, but they didn't they didn't have an update for uh, initially. But on uh, just earlier this week, they released that he had an MCL sprain, which is in all accounts is probably a positive and depending upon what it could have been, obviously it's not a tear. Um, so they did not give a timetable on his return. Um, I do not offhand know what the gen what the general MCL sprain timetable is. Um, but positive, it's not, it's not a tear. Um, so the team says, and so, but that brings me to the topic of their back line depth because Ben Sweat's already gone down. Um, Hector Jimenez has gone down. They just sent Freddie Kleeman to the USL. He's going to – or on loan. Uh, Freddie Kleeman is going to the Birmingham Legion. And so that kind of – for me, that brings up a topic of what are they going to do with their back line? What, 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 are, you, what are your thoughts on that? It, it's a great question um, because, yeah, we were giving Lima a, a bit of a break, I guess, because um, he's played every minute, I think. I think in – last week's game he, they we were kind of getting killed on our right side a little bit they were really taking advantage of that but yeah you're right I mean to have two of our outside defenders now both have injuries and I mean other people obviously have to have to step up Aiden what is his name Aiden Aiden Stanley Stanley that's what it is Aiden Stanley we, he went in for Kolmanich um I don't think he's as strong attacking. Uh, Kolmanich plays really, really great balls in. Um, I thought I don't think he's quite up to to that level, but I think he's going to have to. He'll probably be stepping up pretty big in the next few weeks. I don't know if he'll the, if they'll start switching around other people's positions because you know Julio Cascante plays center D. Yeah. I don't know if they'll get more creative with something like that. But yeah, it sucks to have this many injuries this early on it feels like they've had a lot of a lot of missing people in their back for a variety of reasons i mean like jake said in the other podcast you know um beasler was out for daddy duty and um and so then when you have two um you know outside or out fullbacks that are injured now and um yeah and so i mean that's why i was i was kind of in, interested in why they felt the need to the loan out Freddie Clemens like if you're if you have these injuries that are 
coming about? Like, when did you want to hold on? To I mean, that like was that? before Hector Jimenez got injured, though. Oh yeah, that was wasn't it? So yeah. On on the bright side, uh, Beasler played well. He did. probably is the the best defensive performance we saw last week. That dad strength really uh, kicking into gear. But like honestly, this is this is the question that. I had and that people who know way more about the MLS than I do had about Austin FC going into the season was, is their defense going to be able to defend anyone? Uh, And now it's only getting more complicated (laughs) with the injuries. So my question is like, will they sign, will they use a designated player spot on a defender? What are your thoughts on that, Brittany? And and like, what would the timeline be for, um, an addition. And I don't know. I, I have, I mean, I have no idea. I could not make that decision. I will say, at least in women's soccer, some coaches get creative in what they do with that. They take their out, some of their outside forwards. And what they do is they put them in those outside defender positions because typically, obviously they're very fast. And then you're a little bit more forward minded than they're working their way up and down the field. Like you see Coleman H do an a lot. And, and Nick Lima, he, he gets up there too. So I don't know. I wonder if they're trying out other people in that position as well. Other people that are already on the team. One thing that's like, I, I think it's really helped them is Brad Stuber's kind of patching up a lot of the holes with how, how Stella his play has been, you know, I mean, just like, or just in terms of like, you know, getting, you know, beat on, on the outsides or whatever. Cause like uh, we got beat on the outside with, um, that goal um, against Hector Jimenez. And there's been a couple of times um, in the past games. I think I want to say I saw on the right side, Nick Lima got beat one time. Um, but I mean, when you have, when you have a goalkeeper that's hot, like you can, you can do some stuff. And so I, I props to, to Brad Stuber for doing what he can. Um, but yeah. So with, with all this being said really quick, um, a lot of these problems go away when you get Alex Ring back in the lineup, uh, just because he's he's so good at dictating things on the back end. Um, and I I think like the bigger problem for me remains you're not going to win any games if you don't score any goals. And when you have all your resources devoted into uh, the attacking portion of the team, it gets even more pronounced. So you, you know gotta, who wants to score some goals? Kakuda. He does. does. He really does. Four shots, right? I I mean, immediately. He was hungry for a goal. And they weren't even, like, poorly taken shots because sometimes people Mm -hmm. will be selfish when they shouldn't be. I mean, he took it to them immediately. They were good looks. Uh, He he subbed on um, and immediately made an impact. And that's something that uh, Josh Wolf mentioned, too, was uh, he said that I can't remember the exact term. He said that like his his style of play was unbalancing for defenders was like how he described it. Um, and just, he said that he brought that Kakuda brought a sense of pace and a sense of urgency um, that they were otherwise missing in the, in the first half in his, in his opinion. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I think what makes him special is, is his movement off of the ball. So not just like, when he's getting the ball, but what he does after he plays it or before he gets it, he was finding little pockets and then creating his own space to take shots. Like I was very impressed with Kakuda. All right. So speaking of the man, we will uh, bring him into the Verity V pod right now. How, how intense are these uh, training days between matches? Um, It, it has been very intense. Um, I think, um, you know, the thought behind is, it is to kind of take the load off, but it's, it's tough when you put, you know, a lot of, you know, 22 competitive people and, you know, um, you know, do want to see intensity and, you know, competitiveness. And it's hard to kind of take that load off because everybody wants to yeah. um, give everything they have. But I think the, the idea is to kind of manage because um, we have a lot of guys who have played a lot of minutes. Um, so it's like we're in that phase, like to manage the load, but we still need to come in, you know, in and work every day. So it's been, uh, it's been interesting to see how the, you know, the staff kind of, you know, see what guys uh, uh, need a bit of a, you know, you know, do a little bit less than others and, 
Um, but when, once they're in, I think that the intensity that they do, it goes up than, you know, the staff actually wants. So it's been, it's been really interesting to, to see that, but it's been, it's been really intense. Is the intensity different levels coming after a win versus a loss, or is it always it's, it's always it, it is always there. We always maintain it. Uh, some days are up and down, uh, but for mo- for uh, for the most part, it's uh, it's pretty um, you know same level for the most part. You know, we know what we're gonna get on Monday. We know what we're gonna you know what we're doing on a, on a Wednesday, on a, you know Thursday, on a Friday. So we know what days. Uh, you know, we need to up the tempos and, you know, we speak about it as a group, you know, with the coaching staff and everything. So um, it, it just depend, depends on the day. Um, I don't think, but you see from some of the guys that didn't play, um, get a little bit disappointed and then, you know, come in on that Monday or that week and, you know, they try to, you know, we, we try to up the intensity just to, you know, give ourselves, uh, you know, a bit of a chance uh, consideration. So that's I don't know, another thing as well is the intensity goes up a little bit. What is it like uh, for you to, you know, come here to Austin and then move off into in the MLS and go to different, these different places and then return um, to where you kind of started? Oh, it's, it, it's been amazing. I mean, the journey I can, honestly, I wouldn't want it to go any other way. Uh, it's been amazing. I met a lot of amazing people along the way, um, you know, learn a couple of languages along the way as well, um, which I never thought I could. I would be able to speak any of those languages if you asked me about you know 15 years ago. Um, I you know I probably didn't know what Spanish was uh, when I was in Gambia, um, you know German and stuff like that. So um, I'm really really happy uh, with how the journey went and you know coming back coming back here you know it's a you know full circle for sure. Um, it's nice to be back when I heard that. There's a chance Austin might get a team, and it's like you know that excitement. I think it's been like three, four years ago, probably that this talk has started, and it's been nothing but excite- excitement. Like I've talked about this before. Um, someone asked me about the, the question, and you know, talked to a lot of the guys, like you know, Kyrie Shelton, uh, Chris, you know, Chris Tepark, and you know, Sonny. You know, always like, hey, how excited would it be if Austin get a team, and you know, stuff like that, and to finally see that come into existence and you know um and I had the dream when I was here I want to play for you know a team an MLS team in Austin you know didn't have that growing up but now that we have that and not just for me but you know the kids you know coming through the ranks and you know actually growing up here playing the game and they actually have a hope now to be able to uh have that dream that I want to play for like my hometown team and not a lot of people can say that especially in America um, not every city has a pro team and you know it's just for that you know imagine having that you're growing up you have that ambition that you know I want to be on that team you know going to the games on the weekends and you know seeing the players up close it's just an extra motivation I think um, for, for young players coming up. Going back to uh, when you first moved to Austin that was what 2010? Yes I think. I, I'm not very good. My memory is not. <laughs> so I think, yeah, yeah. So that that is after obviously a childhood of growing up in a very different culture, um, and and you moved to Austin with a host family who you didn't even know at the time. Can you take us through that point in your life? What it was like uh, moving to the United States and moving in with uh, a family that you really knew nothing about. Oh yeah. Well, first of all, it's always exciting to um, you know coming from Gambia, you know coming from all um, a lot of the African countries. It's always exciting to have the opportunity to be able to come to the states um, or whether it be states or Europe. Um, so when I had the opportunity, it was it was really exciting. My family were really happy. Um, um, my grandma was a little concerned, but um, I I I was I was over the moon. I was so happy. I was really excited. Um, I, I didn't think I was actually listening to what anybody else was saying. You know, I, I had the visa. I was like, this is going to happen. I'm really excited. And um, I haven't actually told other people. It's just my, you know, immediate family knew about it. Um, I was really shy when I was younger. So I didn't really talk a lot about things that were happening for me. So, and then when I came over, um, you know, met my family, um, you know, they took, took me in right away and uh, the team I was going to play for my brother my brother now was the captain for the team and then so they 
volunteer to be my host, uh, a foster care family, if you will. Um, so I moved in with them. Um, I was with them for a while, played the tournaments, and you know we kind of you know we gelled. We had a, a you know we have a good relationship, and you know they became a family. You know I felt like I fit I fit in really well. And there was um, some some you know some culture shocks and you know different things here and there that didn't really make sense to me that I had to learn. Um, but other than that, our relationship was amazing, you know, always joking, always, you know, learning off of each other. So I think that was a big thing that we were like, hey, you know, we can actually make this a permanent thing um, if we want to stay here and, you know, keep playing and go to school at the same time. We can, you know, find out, find legal ways to kind of keep you in the country and, you know, you can pursue your dream um, and, you know, do whatever you want to do after that. Do they still live in Austin? Yes. Yes, they still live in Austin. What, so what was their reaction when they found out you were signing with, with Austin <laughs> FC? And how close are, are you to that family? I'm sure you see them all, yeah. all the time now. Both I, was being, living, uh, I, was, I, was, I was I was living with them for the holidays um, at the time when, it, when the whole thing happened. Um, so, yeah, you know, I was off season. I was a free agent and, you know, we were waiting uh, just to see what happens and talking to a few teams and, you know, kind of stalling for, you know, to see what happens with Austin. Um, that's what uh, my off season was all about. You know, just so what's going on, what's going on, you know, let's, let's just wait and see, you know, without, you know, so we can make something happen with Austin. So when the news broke, you know, I told my agent, you know, call me, we talked, and then it was like, there's interest from Austin. And what do you think? So I'm like, all right, you know, I was I, I was working with my mo- I was helping my mom. She works at a church, um, so I, will, I was volunteering there. And then when we came home, we did a conference call with my agent and you know my parents, and we talked about it, and it it, it made sense. It fit. It fit. You know, um, it was something that we we talked about for a while, for a couple of years now. Um, you know, if the opportunity presents, you know, when the scenario, you know, we're going through different scenarios, and then. You know, when he came, there was not a lot of like uh, conversations. It was just like this fits and it works and you're going to be home and, you know, you're going to have a lot of support here, you know, with family and friends and um, emotionally, phys- you know, physically you'll be fine. But, you know, if things are not going well, you have family, to, you know, there's no calls. It's, you know, go back home and, you know, sit down and talk with them and stuff like that. And my brothers are still here. My brother is still here, and then my younger brother is in Houston, not far away. My sister is in Houston, so um, that also came into account. So, uh, but it was a no-brainer when the opportunity came. Um, it was, you know, something I wanted for a long time. Dang. Okay, so let's talk about the game. You come in, and holy cow, you make a difference like immediately. What's going through? your mind right before like are you like all right I'm gonna I'm about to rip the ball and I'm gonna take some incredible shots like is that like are you pumping yourself up what's your thought process oh yeah no for sure um you know I I, honestly I think for you know give the credit to the team I think this team is very very well balanced and um it really attribute to my you know what I'm really good at and it, it shows that because it allows me to play my game and our system really fits what my game is all about, which is running in behind, taking players on, be dangerous going forward, and we want to play attacking football. Um, and you know, we were down a goal, and when I came in, and the the conversation was, "Hey, be positive," you know, which that's always the conversation, you know, whether I'm starting or that's my mindset. I'm I'm an attacking player, and I want to be dangerous. I want to create chances for my teammates, and I want to create it for myself. Um, so my thought process was, when I come in, um, I want to be in a good position, and you know. The first ball I have, if I'm in a good position to face forward goal, run at someone, you know, either create a chance for someone else or, you know, create it for myself. And when Ronnie played me the ball, I turned, you know, I see the defender and I was like, yeah, this is my opportunity. This is why I'm in the game. Um, I have to take this guy on and, you know, make something happen for the team, um, inject some energy. So always when I come into the game, those are like my first um, thoughts. It's like get a shot off, get yourself in the game. You know, I'm always yelling at the midfielders. Um, I wouldn't say what I tell them. I say it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll repeat it here. But <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, yeah, um, I always, always, I'm always yelling at them. I, I seem like a nice guy here, but on the field, not very nice. Um, 
So I always yell at them, hey, get me, get me in the game. And they know always when I'm coming in, they were like, you know, we're coming to you. We need to get you in the game and, you know, for you to make an impact, for you to affect the game and, you know, help create something. So I always, when I come in, I tell the midfielders, first thing I, I talk to, first people I talk to is the midfielders because they're the one that, you know, supply us the balls. And um, so just, you know, have it in the back of the mind, hey, he's going to be open. He's going to be in the space. He's going to be wide. Um, we talk, we talk about all of those before the games, but like, they know that, Hey, if you get it, just turn and look for me. You know, I just, I need to get myself in the game and, you know, I need that confidence to, uh, feel like, Hey, you know, I can make something happen. So I think for me, the first ball, the first two balls that I have when I come into the game are very important. Uh, so my thought process is always take someone on, get a foul or, um, get a shot off. Awesome. So, uh, one of that was one, one of the things that, uh, Coach Wolf had talked about post game and um, in the press conference on I think it was Tuesday um, was the um, the energy that you brought in once once you were subbed into the game and I mean you've only appeared in three games thus far but this last one was really your first extended amount of minutes did, how, did you feel fresh and ready to go like how, like how has this road this road stint been for you um, it's been good uh, coming off of Ramadan so I think um, you know the first four games were a bit difficult uh, for the coaching staff just to, you know, manage, kind of help me, um, not expose me to, you know, to that. Um, but I think I, you know, talked with Joss and he says, you know, we're going to get you more minutes and, you know, we need everybody uh, to be ready because um, we're going to have a lot of games coming up. Um, so I kind of got a cue that I was going to play a little bit extensive minutes um, for this game. Um, so, yeah, I, I, felt, I felt great. I felt, I felt really, really good. Um, I think um, this is really, I think I played 30, about 30 minutes maybe. Um, so I, I think it's really, really good minutes for me coming from, you know, playing a lot of games in preseason and not played for about, you know, a month or so, a lot. And, you know, having those, you know, that 30 minutes, I think it, it's really important for me as an individual uh, for the, you know, um, condensed games we have coming up. And to be able to be ready for that. And, you know, I think that's one positive about that. Um, hopefully I get similar minutes, you know, this weekend as well and kind of build up from there and hopefully get a start in, you know, in the next future here. Um, but I think getting these minutes and, you know, for me coming in, um, it's all I can do. It's definitely have to inject um, energy into the game and, you know, kind of get the guys going. Um, that's, that's the least I can do. I, we have to, I have to keep the tempo up. You know, we always talk about that when we come in as a subs, like, you know, all the subs that came in the first few games, you know, uh, when we have meetings, it's like, you know, you look at it, we, our numbers that, you know, we always try to um, take the game to the next the next step, you know, then always maintain the, you know, the level. So for, for us, that's what, what it's about, you know, uh, do what you do, what you do best, but help us, you know, inject energy and, you know, um, you're fresh and come in and make things happen. Kakuda, you touched on it there a little bit, uh, but I wanted to follow up just about um, the experience of starting a season and also that happening right in in line with Ramadan. Uh, yeah. So, so a month long of fasting, right? Um, also, with that being said, like you're a professional athlete and taking care of your body is. I'm sure one of the biggest priorities. So how do you balance those two things? Um, yeah, it, it, it's tough. It's never easy not, not to eat um, a whole day or not to drink, be able to drink water. Now you can't separate me from water. Um, but um, it, I'm, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. And I've been doing it my, you know, my whole career, my whole, if not my whole life. Um, I think I started fasting when I was like six, five, six years old, um, kind of practicing getting into it. Um, and over the years, I've done it differently, uh, different ways. And, you know, I've learned a lot uh, what works and what doesn't work. Um, and I think for me, that's what helped me. Like uh, a lot of the, you know, part previous years, I've not done the whole month. Um, there were some days I did it. There were some days I didn't do it. Um, and then my role was a little bit different. Uh, coming into the season, I know what my role was uh, for the team. And that kind of helped. Uh, kind of made the decision easier for me to kind of fast a whole month. Um, but if I was in a different role, I'll probably pick and choose, you know, my days. Um, whether it would be, you know, not fasting two days before the game and in the game day and then fast the rest of the week. 
Um, that's how I did it previous years, but now nowhere, you know, these, you know, games, my minutes will be very limited. So that's what my role was. So that's what made it easier for me to be able to do the whole of Ramadan um, this year. But I have the, we have an amazing team here. Um, the support staff is incredible. The medical staff, the, you know, the nutrition, the chef, unbelievable food. Um, if you haven't had it, you're missing out. I'm telling you. We that. haven't had it. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't. You're missing out. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. It, she's, she's amazing. It sounds yeah. like uh, the Austin FC staff was was very supportive of this. Uh, oh, yeah. Have, have you run into just like a, a situation where in your professional uh, career that there's been a coaching staff that hasn't been as accommodating to this and, and yes, what are yes, those struggles probably. like? For sure. For sure. Um, I've, I've been bullied into, um, you know, not fasting, you know, you, you know, this is, um, I know it's your religion is important for you, but you know, they find in ways of like, Oh, you, you, if it's your job, you don't have to deal with it. If it's, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I've kind of been bullied into it a couple of times uh, to not fasting, but you know, I was younger than I was younger back then. And, my knowledge was very limited, you know, now I'm getting older and knowing what I know. And um, this is important to me. It's very, very important to me. And I don't think it, it hinders my performance at all. Um, I have scored, you know, a lot of goals during Ramadan, you know, when I was in Vancouver. Um, I played a lot of minutes when I was in Vancouver during Ramadan. And, you know, you see guys like Pogba and, you know, um, Ahmad and other Zach, Chelsea, other guys are fasting and they're playing, you know, in the middle of the summer or, you know, whatnot, played 90 minutes. So I don't think really, um, just recently it just hit me. Pogba had one of his best games while he was fasting. So for me, it's like, you know, it's, I understand from, you know, that, that side of it, you know, them think, people thinking, oh, if, you, if you're not eating, definitely you can't perform. And it's, it, it could be, you know. You never know, but for me, I don't. I don't think it handles my performance or my energy at all. Um, but the numbers might say differently, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the team here has been very, very supportive. Uh, very, they gave me everything I asked for. Um, always asking how you're doing. We're monitoring you. We're making sure you're okay. And you know, if you feel like you know you need to talk about something else, we can try different things. So, but nutrition-wise, I was okay, and you know, gave me everything I needed, you know, when I break my fast, just to keep, you know, the hydration and, you know, the nutrients and vitamins in me. To really, or to touch back on uh, what you said earlier, um, you mentioned scoring a lot of goals when you were younger. And you, uh, I'm going to throw a shot in the dark. Was your, your hat trick, were you in Ramadan at the time or were you not in Ramadan at the time? It was not, it was in the hat trick was not in Ramadan. I, okay. I remember that vividly. It was not in Ramadan because uh, okay, uh, yeah, it was around. That was in October, I think. If I'm not, um, yeah, yeah, I think it was in October. It was at the end of the season. I had to ask because you said you said that Pogba had one of his best games in Ramadan, so I, and I knew that you were the youngest MLS player to score a hat trick. So I was like, that would be pretty neat if that was a. Yeah. a I know, I lied. I know, I know. I, yeah, I, I always get asked about it in Vancouver. They were like, you always you play amazing during Ramadan, like. What's the secret? And uh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, um, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's, it's, as of right now, it's very, very important to me. Um, and like I said, you know, I've grown up and I've learned a lot from, um, from you know, my previous years in doing Ramadan. And it's, it's, um, it's, a non, it's non-negotiable for me. It's something that, you know, I do and I talk to the team about it and, you know, they're okay with it. And if I'm at risk, I'm not going to do it, but I know I'm not. And luckily, thankfully, the Texas heat, you know, the weather was really nice. The weather has been incredible for me. Um, so I cannot, really, I can't complain at all. Um, are you all ready for me to do a rapid fire? Yeah. Uh, these What's are the that? hardest questions yeah. you're going to be asked all day. Kakuta, we've done a rapid fire, you and me, before. I have yes. new questions for you, okay? Are you ready? Am I ready? I, I was born ready. What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> gosh. I was Fine. born ready. Question number one, in and out or Whataburger? Whataburger. Yeah, Texas guy. I grew up in Texas. Come on. You can't Texas. ask me that question. Okay, you have told me before that you like going to coffee shops. Do you have a favorite local spot? 
do I have a favorite local sport uh, spot? Um, so Summer Moon. Um, is that local? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Summer uh, Moon so, yeah. and uh, Summer Moon and Sweet Paris. Oh, Sweet, Sweet Paris, Paris yeah. is is incredible. By the way, um, they need to give me um, like, <laughs> like a lot. No free brand uh, deals. A lifetime <laughs> membership. Yeah, I need, I need membership for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, what in real life do you think that people should get yellow or red cards for? In real life, mm -hmm. I think um, uh, texting and driving. Is that a yellow Ooh. or red? Is that a yellow that's or a, red? That's, that's, a, that's like two red. That's <laughs> You're ejected. Bad. You're off. They're ejected, like 10 game suspension, I think. Oh, Woo! okay. Yeah, I think that's you put people's right, lives at risk. You know. There you go. So That's a great yeah. answer. Do we have any okay. yellow cards? Do we have any yellow cards? Do you, yeah. yeah, do you have one that would be a yellow card version? Um, I think I, I know. I'm getting back into this text, walking and texting on like in the public. <laughs> in the and public texting. Flat. <laughs> walking and texting. He's... I've been I've been bumped. People have bumped me while walking and putting their phone like head down and texting and just like bump me on the street. I'm like, which way are you going? <laughs> I think that should be a yellow. That should be a warning for okay. sure. Okay. Kakuta is all about the face-to-face -face interaction. You have to, you know? Enough of this. I yeah. Just throw it over there. I like it. Okay, if you could have any animal in the world as a pet, what would you choose? What animal? Um, just one. Mm -hmm. And like, you can shrink it down to like a puppy size if you want. If, if, um, if I can keep a golden retriever puppy to that puppy stayed not grow at all that will probably be my number one but they grow up and they just crazy too much energy and you know um but i will go with fish or oh, birds okay yeah. uh who is the best dressed on the team who is the best dressed on the team mm -hmm. best dressed on the team oh that's interesting we haven't really with COVID. we haven't really um gone out or um Seabass like to dress. He likes, um, you know, nice things. Okay. Um, I would say Sebastian. Yeah, Seabass. Sebastian. Okay. Bell. We'll ask you. Uh, well, I have to ask you that one again when you guys actually are, go out and dress yeah. real nice. Okay. Who's the funniest person on the team? You have to ask that question. Yeah. Who's, <laughs> the, who's the funniest person? And you it, think it's you? That's. I, I was like, do you have to? Come on, that's a cue. <laughs> uh, no, I would. <laughs> I think I would say Ronnie is really funny. Wow. If Ronnie started, if he starts speaking English, you guys, like, everybody's gonna be in trouble. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> hey, that's Ronnie's three a, for three. Ronnie's a Ronnie, clean sweep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ronnie is hilarious. Ronnie is wow. so funny. Yeah, Ronnie is. Um, there is a lot of funny. There are a lot of funny guys in here, but Ronnie is like, you know, um, he's is. Um, it's not even sneaky. It's right there. Oh you my gosh, we're going to have to talk to him. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, what's your favorite genre of music? Afrobeats. Okay. Yeah. And you have previously told me that you were a good singer. Are you ready to sing? Today? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Right now. Um, can we do next time? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. yep. I'll ask you again. I'm gonna ask okay. you every time we'll, I see we'll you. Get there. It's just like you know, I came. It just came out of Ramadan. I have to get my voice ready, and you know. Yes. What I mean? yeah. yeah. Blame it on I, Ramadan. I can't disappoint. I can't disappoint people. You know. Um. But yeah, no. I, I like to sing. Uh, my parents think I'm horrible. My voice is horrible, by the way. My family. <laughs> oh, but like, you think you have a good voice? Up. They say shut up all the time. Every time I start singing, you see. They, <laughs> <laughs> they hate road trips with me. They hate road trips with me. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Um, and then last question, if you see a spider in your house, do you kill it or let it out? A spider? Mm -hmm. I think killing sounds very barbaric. Um, <laughs> of a spider? I know, it's, people are sensitive nowadays. Even a yeah. spider, you can't say you kill a spider. So I, I would say I let it out. He would lie and say he'd let it out. All right. I, I, 
Your keeper is not as I, I would say I kill I would kill a spider, but I'm too afraid of them. Um, so I'm not the oh I'm yeah, not no, no, no. As, as I was waiting for someone to say it as soon as you, I, I kill them too. I kill them. Okay. I stamp it's them your out. house, you know. Is, is there an animal that you're particularly very afraid of? Like worst fear? All of, all of them. All of them. All of them. Trust me. Not golden dogs retrievers. Hate, dogs hate me. If like a, a tiny puppy one, not really. They love me because all they want is you to feed them and play with them. But as soon as they like grow or a little bit older, they aggressive. Like I have so many stories where dogs literally want to kill me. Yes. There's so there's I'm nothing really there's of, nothing worse than a wild dog. I'm on the I'm record to, I'm saying that. But this is like people like people's dogs. Like there was a story I was going to school in uh, in Katy, Texas. I got chased by a dog while I was waiting for a school bus. That's like, a good thing you're fast. I I know. I came into our garage. My mom came out. She was like trying to tell the dog to go away. She was just standing there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I was like, yo, I'm not going to school today. <laughs> you know, good excuse. And then my grandma's dog bit me in Gambia as well. I got bit by, well, my grandma's sister's dog bit me. Man. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. So, what sorry, I don't no, no animals for Kakuda. Yeah, no, no. Um, no, thanks. No, thanks. To I just, I don't know what they're thinking, you know. It's like. They're, they're looking at you. You just don't know if they like really likes you or they hate you. Yeah, that's fair. They know. For me, that's the thing. I will say, ever since getting a dog, I have Googled so many questions about dogs. Like, how do I know if my dog actually likes me at all? <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they can be visual sometimes. You would like Brittany's dog. Brittany's dog is very cute. Yeah, yeah she's very cute. A very cute. My, my, my brother's girlfriend's dog, a golden retriever, he loves me because I think I gave him food a lot and I play with him. Uh, he's That'll about, do it. That's how you that, 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 That's all you gotta do. <laughs> but I don't. I don't have. I don't have energy. He has way too much energy. I come from training. He's there. He yeah. Gets so excited. His tail is a weapon. I'm telling you. He gets excited. Start knocking everything down in the apartment. I'm like, you gotta take this one away. Yeah. You know. But he's. You know. He. He really likes me. I like. You know. He's growing on me. He's kind of changing my. You know. My thinking about dogs now a little bit. So if you if you don't have a like a particular animal you're scared of, is there anything like do you have a like like what's your worst fear? What like what's one of the things that you're scared of? My worst the dark, fear? Any like the dark heights? You know, it's obviously not animals, but everything. I'm telling, I, I I'm like scared. Of, uh, like yesterday, I was working um, to a coffee shop. No, it wasn't a coffee shop. I just had dinner and then I was walking um, by, around my place. Um, and then I was scared of my own shadow. I thought it was someone. <laughs> yes, I thought it was someone was attacking me. I, I like, there was someone coming in front, um, a lady and an uh, Asian lady, she was coming in front. She had like, it was kind of, it wasn't raining, but you know, the weather wasn't so nice. So she had a hoodie on. And then, so she went on the other side, I came to this side. Um, and then for some reason, I thought someone was running behind me. It was me. My shadow got reflected. <laughs> and she, she, started, she started laughing. I was like, oh, wow. My Kuda, can, can we take you to a haunted house? No. Oh, that would be, oh yes. <laughs> that's, that's a no-no. That's not, not going to happen. Nope. House of Torment in Austin? You've never done Come it? Come on. I don't want you. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, get, I, get, I get terrified easily way too easily like chicken like the littlest things i they will scare me chicken? They, wait, 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 wait. chicken i'm telling you i got chased by chickens you, a couple of times okay i well, i've heard of having fear of birds my sister has a fear of birds but yeah. but chicken specifically chickens i'm telling you they they those <laughs> they, they can be dangerous sometimes <laughs> they with them little beaks you know <laughs> <laughs> Get another one. How does it go? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Uh, they 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 can be visual sometimes. Yeah. But no, I'm I'm just really um, I get scared very very easily, you know. And you can scare. I can see you, and I'll still be scared of you. Uh, like if you scare me, I'll still be scared. Yeah. You know? Way too easy for me. Well, well you don't come across scared on the field. I'll tell you that much. Oh no, that's my that's domain. The that's yeah. like that's yeah. that, you know that's that's why i live that's you know 
that's my spot. I'm the boss in there. So that's there. Yeah, no fear in there. I like, you know, I grew up in a, I don't want to say a hostile environment when it comes to playing, but I grew up in a very intense um, environment. And, you know, every day was like that. It don't, it, it, you know, it's, it gets very aggressive. It gets very intense. It's like, sometimes you're scared, you know, you might come home with an, a very, very bad injury. Yeah. Um, and p- people wearing metal studs and like gravels and stuff like that, you know. Uh, so none of none of things scare me anymore because I, you know, I've gone through it. If you see, if you see machine, it's all, <laughs> it's all, you know, messed up. So I've I've gone through that. That doesn't scare me anymore. You're um, able to flip the switch. Oh yeah, for sure. On the field, it's 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 very easy for me. It's very easy for me. Well, I, I look I forward have, to you I, scoring a goal so you can do the doggy. Oh, um, I'm, I'm actually, you know, uh, me and um, uh, Julio and Johan, we might come up with something, you know, something even well, better. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Can we wait, have that's, a hint? That's, it's, it's in the works. You know, it's, it's a surprise. Okay, yeah. That's fair. Yeah, it's, it's a surprise. So, you know, you will see it. You will see it when I, when I score one of them, one of us score. Ronnie is actually involved too, so. Oh, yeah. great. So it's going to be funny. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. The two if funniest anything, guys on the team. Very, very funny. I think he would probably would mess up for sure. That would probably make it funny. He would be able to keep up. The two funniest guys on the team doing this little celebration together. I love it. Uh, well, we appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for coming on the Verde B pod, man. No worries. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Kakuda. Yo, Kakuda brought the energy, did he not? Oh my goodness, that guy! I, I like him a lot. He he seems very he seems very likable. Um, you has know, a great he, chicken impression. The, the, yeah, apparently with the, with the poking the the beak. Yep. Um, scared his of everything. Story, yeah, his story to get here is just really cool. It I is. Think, uh, yeah, he's a people that or he's a person that people here in Austin can really get behind for obvious reasons, considering his connections to the city. I agree. Um, so, I mean, it's it's going to be really interesting to see his uh, his role moving forward because, like like he said with uh, with Ramadan um, early on, um, Austin FC was very accommodating uh, to him, and they kind of kept his minutes down uh, while he was observing Ramadan. And I mean, but so, I mean, he's only one player. He like, he obviously had a lot of energy going into uh, this last game. Josh Wolbe talked about that the energy was kind of lacking in the first half as a, from an overall team standpoint, and then inserting Kakuda um, kind of gave a jolt of energy. So um, what do you think that that plays into? Like, are the players, you think, getting tired? Like, the players that have to play all these minutes every single game, it's you play on the road, travel, all these things, not just mentally, but physically, what, this, uh, what the toll is. I think it's a good sign that you actually see a tempo change once our subs are in. Um, You don't always see that. Sometimes subs are just, you know, the next level down or whatever, but I don't think that's the case at all. I think we've seen that multiple times. Our subs come in and they actually really, like Kakuta said, take it to the next level, not just try to keep up, but they actually bring everybody with them to that level. And Kakuta did that this weekend for sure. Yeah, I think uh, the challenges that an eight-game road trip have to start the season are significant and also twofold. Like part of it's physical and then part of it's mental too. And that was something that uh, Josh Wolf talked extensively about this week. I'm trying to think of like the comparison that like normal people could uh, draw from this. It's like if you and I had to wake up every morning – hop on a plane and then go do our job at a different city. And we had to do that for eight weeks in a row, like road road trips are fun. And like being on the road is fun, but like it gets old after a while. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's the initial thrill of it. And then it's like, God, I can't wait to be back home. And you get back home and you kind of feel like your life gets back into that routine that you're comfortable in. These guys don't have that until mid June. So, um, that's hard. It's really hard. It's like not just road trips. Like these are cross country. Like they went to LA twice. They're about to go to Seattle in two weeks. 
Um, it's not just like they're, you know, going to Dallas or they're go like, I'm sure the Kansas city trip was a little bit more feasible for them. Um, and likewise with the Colorado, but it's like, they've been to LA twice already. They're going to go to Seattle and that's what four, three, four of the games, half of their road trip is, is cross country trips. And so that's going to take a toll at least mentally, I would, I would imagine. Yeah, well, and and like it's not even a one to one comparison to the parallel that I just drew because their job actually involves like physical activity, <laughs> whereas <laughs> ours like doesn't. <laughs> so what are you talking about? I carry a camera sometimes on occasion. That's physical. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I also walked forty eight miles at uh, the WGC Dell Match Play tournament. So <laughs> yeah, it that's that's besides the point here. It's still not to the level of playing soccer for ninety no. minutes. Not at all. So um, <laughs> speaking of, um, our soccer 101 is going to be like that. Sometimes they don't play just 90 minutes. They have to go past that. So today, <laughs> Brittany's going to talk about uh, stoppage time. Right. I mean, but it is essentially building to there's game time for 90 minutes. So each half is yeah. 45 minutes. So stoppage time happens at the end of each half. And what they do is they kind of calculate how many times the ball stopped because unlike other sports that stop a lot like football that stops every two seconds this football aka soccer is continuous for 45 minutes I mean you barely even have time when the ball goes out because there's ball boys or whatever that give you a ball immediately so there's not breaking so 45 minutes straight so but within that 45 minutes, there is times where the game stops either due to goals and celebrating like Kakuta mentioned or injuries or people arguing with the ref for five minutes saying, why did I get this card? That sort of thing. (laughs) And so what they do is they kind of, for each half, they tally that up. And at the end of the half, you'll see the um, ref on the sidelines with his little thing. And it says seven, which is a long time or three, whatever, depending on how much time was stopped out of that 45 minutes. So they do it for the first half and then boom, that 45 minutes happens for the second half and they add stoppage time at the end. So that is stoppage time. It's so that people can actually play for that long. Go ahead, Jay. Counterpoint. (laughs) (laughs) Let me get my cards ready. You know what's coming. Get the card ready in the pocket. Go ahead why what's the thought process this is a genuine question what's the thought process behind just not stopping the clock when those things happen like why does the clock need to continue running and then you add stoppage time why couldn't you just stop the clock when the stoppages happen that way it's not a guessing game as to how much stoppage time you'll have i don't know i don't make the rules I didn't decide That's because in soccer, point. the clock doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It, it keeps but going. Why? That's a soccer thing because we don't like to stop like other sports like football. Yeah, I know. But like the, the thing is like you're still admitting that stoppages happen or else stoppage time wouldn't exist. Right. So then are you adding another position and you have to pay a whole another person to go, okay, now we're going to stop. It. And I mean, someone's, ar- someone's it. already up there doing that when the goals happen. No, they just click it and then they sit away and that's, wait until that's the and then they add it when the goal happens. Well, hold on. Here's another part of that question. You get your finger out of my face. <laughs> Jason, look at me. I'm the captain though. That's multiple. So you get this. Okay. Accumulation. Uh, Accumulation red. Is it is it someone's job to sit on the sideline? And have like a stopwatch timing the stoppages. You know, I've wondered that too. And I was actually going to look that up and see if that, if that was an actual job for me. I mean, when I'm watching, I can usually get pretty close to where the stoppage time is, but that's because I've been, I mean, I've played soccer. You can kind of get a a feel for it. Let me, I'm looking it up right now. How is stoppage time uh, determined? There is no hard and fast rule on how stoppage time amounts are determined. But there are a few different yeah. guidelines uh, used to keeping track of things. Uh, commonly, the fourth referee who stays on the sideline will keep a stopwatch that he runs during every stop to keep track of time lost. Interesting. And then he tells the center ref. Yeah, yeah that, and that was going to be my follow-up. Is it like a scientific exact number and that there's someone keeping track? Or is it 
kind of the head ref just eyeballing it and being like, well, there were, there were like one, two, three, four stoppages during this. And I know when there are four stoppages, that normally amounts to three or four minutes. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, and so there's, they communicate. So like people yeah. on the side will say, okay, this is how much it is. But also, I mean, like with many things, when it comes to refing, things can be somewhat subjective. So, you know, let's say you're winning a game one zero and maybe there was a little bit of time when the game stopped, but then all of a sudden they add seven minutes. Holy cow. Like you can, people can argue that. So it's not a set, set like it was exactly six minutes and 45 seconds based on this exact stopwatch, you know? So as, do you want to get rid as, of that rule too? No, 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 no. Uh, okay. But as someone with a storied high school soccer career, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Uh, for your varsity letterman, just kidding. Uh, like, <laughs> just kidding stop- or not kidding? Uh, not in soccer, no. Two year varsity letterman. <laughs> uh, stoppage time was always like the most stressful time. Like, your nerves go through the roof when you're protecting a lead, a one goal lead. Like, you're just holding on for dear life. There is no well, why- desire to score. It's just like, kick the ball as far as you can at all costs and just try and waste as much time as possible. Well, and how they waste time is you kick it to the corner that you're like the corner of the side you're trying to score in. And you literally have one guy hold it in the corner and shield people out. off. And that's how mostly people waste time. Cause when you kick it out, like I said, they immediately have a ball like right back in. But you're right, adding that, that's stressful. It's stressful, and a lot of goals can get scored in the 91st minute. But, le- but let me, it that, that, that 91st, 92nd, 97th minute goal is electric. <laughs> yeah, Espe- that's true. Especially when, like, I mean, I mean it's going to be good either, either way, but especially, especially if it's a game winner or if, you, you know, game tying or whatever, like, oh, it's, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Moving forward, we have to look forward to <laughs> – it's getting me all riled up. Uh, Nashville SC is uh, up next, and they have yet to uh, lose a game, but they have um, only gotten one win, and they have three draws. So they have – what that would be six points. So they also have six points, but they've got three draws. Um, they are coming – or sorry, they have four draws. They have seven points. Um, so, that's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. that's so wild. <laughs> Yeah, they, one win, one win, and four ties. Yeah, that means that, that means they've had to kiss their sister four times. <laughs> have you ever heard that expression, Brittany? No, I have not. Oh, tying, yeah. tying, tying is like kissing your sister. What? Is, what is, you have to be <laughs> no, no, That's not a red. That's not a yellow card. <laughs> that is a sports <laughs> expression. Oh, yeah. My. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Back to Nashville SC. I would, yeah, so. I would rather, I would rather be zero and four than I know they're one. No, zero. because there's points. You there's get a point for a tie. Yeah, and but they just, don't, they awesome. can't, they can't. They feel like there was something more there that they could have attained. At least a loss, like you know how to feel. You feel dejected and down and upset. A tie is like you're just kind of. Well, no, you wind. still feel ways if you tie. Like, let's say you were sucking the whole game. If you tie, you're like, all right. All right, all right or all right. let's say you're you're doing so good, but then you end with a tie, let's say in a last second goal, then you're like, then you feel pretty pissed about it. There's still emotions there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the crazy Do you part. think that they, we should not have any ties in soccer, Jake? Uh... That's a great question. I'll need to get back to you on that. Okay, let me know. That's a question I, uh, from another podcast. I think I think I'm fine because I don't like I don't think regular season matches should be ended in penalty kicks. Right. But I I could see the argument that you play in overtime until someone scores. And then you're just playing forever. So you want to just do golden goal? Yeah. Oh yeah. But then what happens, like, if, like, if they just, no one's, like, you just can't yeah. find the back of the net and you just play for, like, four hours, like. That's on you, man. <laughs> at some point. Like they're, they're, they're you want it to be like baseball? Baseball goes some, forever, right? 
Well, not as much anymore because they now put a runner on second base in extra innings. But uh, what was I going to say here? Oh, yeah. At some point, a team is going to need to decide, is it better preserving our physical health and just forfeiting a win? Say, like, you're in, like, the 300th minute and it's clear no one's catching <laughs> Are you like, you know what, you know what, it, we're better off taking this L because it's going to be a W in the long run. Oh my no, goodness. I don't like, I don't like it this week. I don't like that. I don't That's like such an extreme, of- but I feel like it would happen <laughs> at some point if you had those rules. No, I'm not, I'm not being actually serious here. I'm just being, no, oh, you're man. serious. <laughs> we're all serious here. Just um, joshing. You're just joshing. Um, but yes, I mean, they, it's it's kind of wild. They started their, their season out with three ties in a row, 2-2, two, 2-2, two, 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 and then nil-nil. Um, they got their first one against New England, and then they just tied nil-nil with uh, Real Salt Lake. And so, I mean, this next game, too, is uh, going to be nationally televised, so that's cool. That's going to be on FS1. Um, Don't have I'm to sure. watch it on Twitter. Yeah, right. and then uh, – yeah, exactly. And then uh, – it, I'm, Austin FC, like they've been uh, streaming them on their uh, on their app too. I've watched a couple of games that way. Uh, so shout out Austin FC for doing that. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm excited to see um, where this goes. Austin is uh, sitting at tenth in the West right now. They got six points, and then Nashville is eighth in the East. The Western Conference is is a little bit stronger than the East right now. When I was looking at it um, in terms of like points, and it's all led by uh, Seattle at, uh, right now. Um, these two teams, Nashville and Austin, have no common opponents yet. I mean, that's probably going to be that way for Austin. It was kind of an outlier for the Galaxy game for them to already have a common opponent. But um, I assume that that will be the case for quite a bit of their season. Um, so what are you all looking forward to in this upcoming match? Alex Ring being back. Yeah, that's that's fair. He definitely plays a, a vital role um, in that midfield um, aggressively tackling or not, um, depending upon who you ask. Um, but it seems that everyone that we've talked to, they've always, they've always said that he's kind of that leadership presence in that locker room and on the field. So not having that, that person will obviously make a difference. I'm not going to go as far as calling it a must win, but I think it's a must get points. Because if you don't, oh, so now points, you want ties. So now you're okay with a tie. Okay, we see. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that was coming. Um, <laughs> see, hey, I'm not. I'm not playing in these games. I'm just watching as a neutral third party observer. Um, I think they need points out of this because if you don't get points out of this, you're staring at Seattle next week. That's gonna be a tough game. Yeah, it is. 16 points, most in the MLS. They they're a they're a wagon, as the youth say. <laughs> I don't yeah, think Brittany's a part of the wagon conversation. We have to explain what wagons are. Yeah, what? It's just a, it's an abbreviation for bandwagon. So, like, hop on the bandwagon. To call okay. a team a wagon means that they they're, they're dominant, bandwagon. and so people are all of a sudden fans of them. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, you don't get points this week. You have to play against the wagon that is Seattle. Uh, and I'm not saying they should expect to lose that game, but like, no, man, they, they shouldn't. Then they should you're not. then then you're staring at a four game losing streak, and you go against the Kansas City team that you've already lost to once. And I mean, I'm not predicting a five game losing streak before the home opener, but I'm just saying like things can when you we talked when about you start, it matters. Yeah, things can unravel quickly. So there's I do there's think a lot it matters riding a lot. on this game. Coming out of the game that they just played, it was pretty. It was pretty rough how they just played. I think how they return from that will tell us a lot about this team and its resilience. Yeah, I I agree with that. So I mean, because like when you look at the season as a whole, you lost your home opener, but I mean, obviously they they the, the two best players weren't playing for most of the game. But I mean, that's still fair. That it's tough to win your first game ever. Um, they have that really good win against Colorado and then they get a clean sheet against Minnesota and then they're even leading against, uh, Kansas city. Um, and then after, but ever since that, um, 
uh, the, the fallout of Kansas City has just kind of gone downhill. So you gotta you gotta stop the the bleeding, uh, so to speak. I'm ready so, for Cecilia to score again. I'm ready for Tomas to get his first. Yeah, that's what I'm ready for. That's gonna happen this weekend. I think your, they're both gonna score. That's Brittany's bold take. Yeah. I, I I would like to see Tomas score on a free kick, like like the one he scored in preseason, because that goal was filthy. Um, and then he also had the, the one that hit off the crossbar, which also would have been very filthy. Jake, the, DPs, the DPs need to play like DPs. I agree. DPs got to play like DPs. Anything else before we... Uh, okay, so if I'm basically the ref, because I have the cards and you're the captain, then Paul can be our DP. We all <laughs> have our roles. <laughs> I'm okay with being the designated player on the squad. How does it feel to be the highest paid member of this group? I don't know about that, but um, <laughs> I mean, as, as a DP, you are. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, th- in theory, I am, uh, or and my salary doesn't count towards the cap. So, or at least the, you know what I'm trying to say. Like we can get into salary caps later. Um, that'll be another Paul is, soccer. Paul is the David Beckham of this group. Oh my goodness. We're just throwing out. A list name, or is it? Would you would you call him an A list? An A list? Yeah, he's A list in my book. Let me tell you. <laughs> I would give you a yellow card if I had one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, looking for, I'm looking for cards. We no, nope. Brittany's the controller of the card. She's the referee. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that is will do it for us. Um, this episode is actually going to drop early. Um, usually they go on uh, Fridays, but this one is going to come out Thursday night. So that's uh, lucky for you guys. And so, and for the way other, Austin FC content, you can go to kvu.com slash Austin FC, or you can text the word soccer to 512-459-9442, and you will get a link to the, uh, the Verity View pod playlist the latest link to either the preview or recap, depending on when you text uh, and what the link is, and all your other Austin FC news. So with that, we are going to check out the news. He's the, he's the captain. And red card. I need to get money. You can also text soccer to... I will personally respond with, yes, please. <laughs> Let's see it, Jake. There's not even a see it. What is that? What is I that? told you, I told you I don't have a, an Did official Did you just go find a scrunchie? No, it's, look, it's <laughs> so, it? a scrunchie. It's a, you know, you know, uh, the things that... Well, see, that looks better when it's oh, out like, like that. When you have it all scrunched together. I mean, it? but, like, it's not that... How hard would it be to throw a uh, Sharpie a C on there? You're bad sure. at arts and crafts. Guess what I have? Guess what I have for you? Red card. Get That's a pink card. That did look kind of pink. You know what? It is. This is the closest that I have. I was, like, so mad because this is the closest that I have. And I have so many craft things. So many. Yeah. 